it's time. She's just so pretty. I love it. You have asked and I am here to deliver. Since I made my first one, I have had tons of requests to make another one, but it has genuinely taken me this long to decide on a design. Thank you to everybody who voted. We have got the materials and today we are finally making a second crown to add to my collection. The chosen design is from 1845. It was actually designed by Prince Albert for Queen Victoria. Shockingly, when it was made, it was obviously made out of diamonds and emeralds. It costs 1,000 pounds. As of right now, it currently resides in the v &A Museum in London, which I would pretty much sell my firstborn to be able to go and visit one day. Queen Victoria was painted wearing it twice, and it's very iconically one of her tiaras, although it did end up with her descendants, and then the Fife family donated it to the museum, which is why it's on display now. And that is all I know about it off the top of my head. As this is quite a historic piece, there are paintings of it being worn, but there are little to basically no photographs of it being warm. I have one or two. They're very distorted, blurry, old from far away, but museums are fantastic at photographing their display pieces, so I do have some extremely high resolution pictures for the actual references of making it. So without further ado, let's dig in. Working from the bottom of the tiara upwards, we start with a row of diamonds. For this row, I bought some more of the chain stones just because it saves a ton of time. Next up, there are these rectangular emeralds, which I will be substituting in some beautiful glass green stones because I do not have an emerald budget. I also managed to get square versions of these as well to go in the set just slightly above the rectangle ones. We then come to these nice little swirl designs. To make these, I just have assorted sizes of the glass stones like I did last time. In fact, most of them are just left over. And finally, the feature of this particular crown are the teardrop emeralds along the top. I managed to find some beautiful green glass teardrop beads and I have some filigree caps left over from my first crown that I will be using to case these and then attach them to the tops of the tiara. Because of material limitations, mine will be far more uniform in size when it's complete, whereas the actual version gets smaller as it reaches the back. Before we jump into the pretty stuff, we need to make the actual base skeleton structure of the tiara. Pretty much all the same materials as the last time, so that's handy. I remember the last time I was doing this, I was on the table in the other room downstairs because I didn't have a functional studio back then. Why is it curling? Ugh. Basic wire for the actual foundation of the crown is plain wire headbands. Thicker structure is from 0.8 millimeter silver plated copper wire. For all the actual threading different pieces together, I've got this really thin 0.3 millimeter wire. The structure that I actually need to make for this one is remarkably similar to my first one. Because in my first one, I had to make all of these horseshoe like shapes. And looking at the actual design, it's very much it's that similar horseshoe structure going round, only it's a bit more squared off this time. This was a trick that I did when I made the first one, which was I drew out the horseshoes that I needed. So that way, when it actually came to making the wire versions, I had a quick reference to measure against. Gotta say, it's already coming back to me just how fiddly this stuff is. Oh my God, this is so fiddly. I decided to test the size and shape of the horseshoes against my gems, which presented not one, but two issues. First delay of the project, just now realised I was doing the measurements for the skeleton and I checked it against some of my green glass stones, only to realise I'm missing half of them. I received them, I looked at them and I was like, they're perfect, they're beautiful, great, and I don't know, my mind didn't really clock that they weren't all there because I'm supposed to have double what is actually there. I guess the seller just kind of missed me, me ordering a quantity of two of everything and just sent one of everything. Dropped them a message and just asked if they can get them posted to me as soon as possible. Oh, day one is off to a great start, isn't it? The second issue I encountered was all of my horseshoes were twice the width they needed to be, so I guess I was just way off in my original measurements. Luckily, one of the tools I was using was the exact right width I needed, so I could just quickly bend the wire around that and they would all be uniform. 
quick off-screen update. They have read my message and replied to it within minutes and they are sending out the rest of the stones first class today so I should get them really really quickly. Project is back on track. The next step was to wire wrap each of the horseshoes together and then attach this to a wire base ready to go onto the headband. At this point I realised I wanted some additional structural support for the second row of diamonds to go on so I added in an additional band slightly above the base. With my original project all of the gems had these backs on them which meant I could just thread wire straight through them and it was really easy to attach. Green stones are not threadable stones which means my plan for assembling it kind of just went out the window when I realised that. I'm left with one option, glue. I need a really fast drying glue so I can just whack them on and they'll stay put so I'm gonna run down to the shop and pick up some ye olde super glue. And naturally I also went to the antique shops and did not get back to work for the rest of the day. We now have our skeleton. Ooh, the glue is still a little bit wet. I regret picking it up a little bit, but here we are. We've got our base spiky structure and there's the band going across the bottom that I will be able to put the rows of diamonds on, which is what the first steps will be for today. I have these really beautiful long lengths slightly knotted lengths of the three millimeter glass stones. And these will be, I don't say pretty easy, but when is anything in this craft ever pretty easy? Around like that, which saves a lot of time and that glue is still wet, so I should really be careful. I think I am gonna then add the sets of two on and then finally I'm gonna start adding my rectangular green stones, which I won't lie, I don't feel good about. I have no confidence in its ability to just stay attached with glue alone. But glue alone is all I have. I'm dreading it, but we're gonna try our darnest. Once I've done that, obviously all that glue will need a while to dry before I can add any more stuff onto it. Now if I am to be completely honest with you all, it is actually three o'clock in the afternoon. I was meant to start this morning, but my mom came around and now it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So this is going to be an afternoon slash evening session. At some point in this process, uh, a dressing round will come out and it will get very dark, but we will continue nonetheless. I started out by cutting two lengths of the chain stones and began the process of wire wrapping them to the skeleton structure. This is an unusual process in that it is both relaxing and stressful, but I suppose that just comes with the territory of any fiddly craft. With the rows complete, I moved on to the sets of two that go in between the emeralds. I've currently got the two rows of diamonds on. Basically, it kind of looks like braces. For the next stage, I've started making these little things. They're basically just two gems together on wire. I was getting far too impatient to figure out if the glue would actually work or not, so I tested one of them, and it seems to be holding pretty well, so I don't want to jinx it, but I think this might actually work. I decided to glue the rest of the emeralds on before attaching the sets of two in between them all.
buy some actual miracle, <laughs> these green stones are holding on really well. Spoke to you soon. Right now, I'm just in the process of adding the little sets of two that I made in between each of the green stones that have been glued on. This is an incredibly fiddly process. So far, I haven't knocked any green stones off whilst doing this. When I finished with this step, what we're gonna call it, we'll start fresh by making the glue clusters tomorrow. I love it already. She is already so beautiful to me. And should I be wearing this on my head? Probably not. I feel like it's already probably got stuck. This is where we are starting day three. We have the green gems secure in place. Just focus on this, thank you. There's now the little two gem dividers in between all of those. So that's all doing pretty well. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the glue out today, which means opening the window to ventilate and getting the mask out and everything because this is like proper big boy glue. I'm going to put little blobs on the back of the stones. Glue is more like silicon-like when it dries, so I feel like that will create more of an actual adhesive than just using the super glue alone. Whilst I'm very grateful they have stuck on, I'm still really paranoid about these green stones falling off, so I just wanna be like super sure that they're on there. From there, I'll start making my glue clusters. I have already made a little template for. Now, whilst this looks like absolutely nothing, this is actually a template for me to follow sizing and shape-wise when arranging my gems into the little glue puddles so I can make them all the right size. I need to make 13 sets of that double loop with the square in the middle. That's pretty much probably going to be the whole of the day because I imagine that's going to take a while and then after I've done that the glue needs to dry for 24 hours before I can really do anything else with it. Let's get on with it and get some glue out. Apparently I don't sort my cutting board very well. You know how I had to take that entire detour to go down to the shop and buy some super glue? Well, I just found some whilst I was looking for my mask. So, I guess I've got plenty to spare. So I need to find the mask though. So I'm just gonna start by putting the little glue blobs on the back of the crown, and then we'll get the cling film out, cover the board, and start making the clusters. Before I glued anything, I arranged all of my sets out first so that I had all of the right shapes and sizes in place. I also used a reference on my laptop to ensure I was getting it as close to the original design as I possibly could. That has taken me just under 10 minutes just to arrange one of them. I need to make 13 of these little arrangements. Gonna be here a while. When I did get the glue out, it was a fairly smooth process to move each stone over and replicate the same shape. It was not smooth, however, to film as my hands pretty much blocked every shot. If I was left-handed, this stuff would have been a lot easier to film.
have now made 13 little gem clusters. They are adorable and very sparkly. And I will be leaving it there because I'm really hungry and it's pitch black and I want to go eat. That just warms your soul. And good morning to you. Today will hopefully be our last day and then it will actually be finished. I can't do the results shoot today because obviously the glue will need to dry after I do finish it. So that will hopefully be tomorrow, maybe the day after, but I mean, that won't make any difference to you guys watching the video. Last night, we left it with the glue clusters on the cling film, which I'm gonna be peeling off this morning. Granted, it has not been a full 24 hours. I checked it and it has solidified, so I'm gonna risk it. I mean, it'll be fine. It's just not like fully, fully cured, but it's fine. In other news, the last of my gems has now arrived, so I can finish off the squares that go along the top. The shop that I bought these from was absolutely lovely. Like I messaged them about missing a couple and they sent them out straight away in first class and they gave me an entire bag of just like assorted colours and size and they are absolutely beautiful and I am so grateful but also they really did not have to do that but they were they were amazing. 10 out of 10 recommend Crystal Vintage GB on Etsy and eBay. Not really sure how all these last stages are gonna go. I don't think it'll be overly smooth, but I think we will be able to hodgepodge it together and by the end of the day, we will have an actual complete tiara. There's no real method to this other than just being very gentle. <laughs> A couple of them are a little bit wonky, just where the, the gems have moved about before the glue fully set. As a whole, they are pretty darn good, and the wonky ones can go at the back. They look like little blingy pumpkins. Maybe I should make something really ridiculously ornate at Halloween. Now I have my gem clusters, I could measure them against the tiara and cut the spikes to the correct size. Honestly, I just want to make crown projects all of the time. I love doing this. I don't know why, but the whole glue gem cluster thing is just the happiest thing my brain could possibly do. It's all just so satisfying. The moment I have been putting off. Despite them being used in the original design, I have decided against putting filigree caps on the end of the gems. I originally intended to, and I had some left over from my last project that I didn't use, so I was just gonna use those. But when I've actually come to it, the ones I've got are pretty small and it kind of feels pointless to be honest but I need to try and figure out a way to wire around each of the teardrops onto the shorter spikes and for them to actually stay upright as well that is my challenge maybe I will get really really lucky or maybe I will use a lot of glue oh actually that's a thought there's potentially a plan forming hang on This is so fiddly. I'm gonna be here forever. Cause I have to do this 13 times. It's not perfect by any means. As you can tell by the way, it's currently flopping. With much glue, I can probably make this work. Glue has been my best friend on this project. If I'm very gentle with it. Yeah, huh, right? In the space of 15 seconds, you will witness three hours of work. So how does one entertain oneself whilst watching glue dry? Well, activities I found to be acceptable include demonic possession, taking your frustrations out on the glue, and finally realising the spies that have taken up residence in your studio have made a home to rival Shelob. 
Using yet more glue, I began the process of attaching my gem clusters underneath each teardrop. This is probably the worst I have ever glued myself to anything. Just look at how much I am bending that to get it off my finger. Fuck. It was not the last time I glued myself to it, but it was certainly the most painful. With the last two sets of gems to add on, I cut down the remaining spikes to the right height and began gluing the round stones on first. Yes, more glue. Can we just appreciate how beautiful the sunlight looks in this shot? And finally, I glued on all of the green squares. They were absolutely horrendous, but at least they look pretty. It's finished. <laughs> now I'm gonna absolutely cake the entire back of it in a whole lot of glue just to hold everything in because I do not trust any of this to not just fall off. Some of these gems are literally, there is like half a millimeter of contact and that's it. That's all that's being held on by. I can't believe I finished it. My lord. <laughs> I'm a little bit lost for words. I love this thing. I made this. <laughs> I cannot believe how well this turned out. I am so happy with it. Honestly, I'm like a child playing dress up. I never want to stop. <laughs> I'm in love with this thing and do not ask me to pick between this one and my first one because my partner already asked which one was my favourite and I was like, I can't, they are my children, I cannot pick between my children. The growing love I am having for these crowns and how much I just, I mean it's stressful and fiddly, but how much I do genuinely love making them. Crowns might, might become a regular thing on the channel. I have such a long list of ones that I want to make, both real life actual crowns and tiaras and stuff, and then also just ones from fiction and fantasy as well. I guess I should probably say something that I would improve about it. I guess in an ideal world less glue <laughs> probably would have been nice, but it works, so the base of it has a lot of exposed wire so if there was one thing that I would improve about it or maybe go back into and, and try and neaten up a little bit it'd probably be just all the, the exposed wire on the base because I don't have that on my first one but when it's actually on your hair kind of covers that anyway so it's a uh, it's not a big deal I love it so much <laughs> I will compose thank you 
so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the crown making process as much as I do. I know I definitely enjoyed the results. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of my projects. Upcoming ones include an Edwardian corset and then my big over the top ridiculously fancy Met Gala dress that now that I think about it, this crown will actually match. So I guess I'm wearing this with that now. <laughs> Feel free to drop your suggestions for future crown makes in the comments and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Is that what a cornet is? Or am I just thinking of a cornet? What's the other one called? I've limited it down to just two spikes. That made no sense. Yeah. I think every project should just have glue glam. Glue glam? <laughs> I guess the heart pounding. <laughs> Took my hair out and now I feel like a prom queen. <laughs>